Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super elated to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop video for you today. But first, make sure you subscribe and mash that notification button so you never miss a Swing Dance reaction video ever again. Folks, I'm really excited for this one because we are going to Spain. It's at an event called Move Your Bottom 20. 20. This is an open Jack and Jill format, which simply means you're going to have a leader and a follower get together and do a lot of improvisation. I'm telling you, you can't sleep on the open level. There is so much talent at this level. You just have to keep your eyes open because you never know what you're going to miss. Do not let your hearts be troubled, folks. I am going to tell you the absolute truth about who I feel are the winners of this competition. So if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, this is not the place for you. All right, you ready for this? I'm ready for this too. Let's see, move your bottom in Valencia. Oh, they've got some good paella down there. Arguably the best. Come at me, it is wonderful. All right, gotta get my Sherlock perspective on. So clearly these, this couple can dance and this is not a traditional open level. I'm telling you, this is like an advanced level uh, that would probably be ranked pretty high uh, a couple of years ago. This is good. It tells me that there's a hunger for people to get better at this. A real hunger. But now, let's see if they do what I look for. All right. Who will destroy mediocrity? I'm looking closely. Yeah. This is, this is getting pretty interesting. I think they all can do, so far they can all do a little bit of the same kind of moves. They've got the technique down. And that means there's no clear winner so far. All right, let's see what happens with this couple. Hey, hey. Hey, I like that. I like that. Oh, that was a nice little knee slap. I saw that. Okay. Uh. Okay. All right, let's see who is next. All right. This. Come on, all right.
Oh, I like that. Ah, putting that in there. Okay. Yes. She's special. You better watch her, folks. Keep an eye on her in that gold shirt. She's got some fire. Okay, so it looks like they get in round two. All right, now I'm really watching on this one. Let's see if they do the swing out. Here we go. Even the newbies got to have it in their bones. Let's see what happens. Yes, they're just unsaid rules. That's like the, the rule you have to do is that swing out, right? At the conclusion. This band is solid. This band is solid. Yes! The open level is on fire, folks. Let's talk about it. I gotta tell you, I was quite impressed by this. Every year the open level just gets higher and higher and higher. And that is quite impressive. It really is. It, I mentioned earlier, it says that people are working hard on the art form. And people just, they have something to prove if they're going to compete. So it's really impressive to just see the, the level of what we would consider as beginner or intermediate, it, it's no longer the same, technically speaking. And that's good for the art. That's good for the art. So I gotta give credit to everybody who put themselves out in this event like this, or at least in this competition. Great job, guys. Great job for just elevating the dance in the terms of just hard work. 
See, when I came in, guys, I came in as a professional dancer, and I thought, is this it? Is there's not like there's not like a professional school where we can learn to master this thing? I thought, this is it. You just go to events and you just kind of social dance and take classes. This isn't a real culture that kind of precipitates excellence and hard work. That was my initial inclinations when I had talked to someone. I was like, really? You're you're telling me this is how people get good? I'm thinking you, you can't just get good at this if you're not if there's not a real conduit for people to get good in a structured way. And I thought, okay, well maybe. You know, people will go take classes and do that and, and work it out. But it's still when I came in, there was just few that worked really hard in the art form. Lots of people competed, but few were working on it as a profession. And I can tell you some of these dancers in this competition had that same grind, that same attitude and fervor to, to get better. I could just tell watching them. I'm going to tell you right now, just my favorite dancer of this whole level. <laughs> she was awesome. She, I don't know what her, her name is. Uh, she had like gold on, like a gold shirt and like a gray pants. I loved her dancing. I got to tell you why I loved her dancing. Because clearly everything about swing dancing is subjective. I say 75% of it is. The 25% that I could be critical on and that any judge can be critical on is the technical part of it. What exactly is the technical part? We're going to get into that later. But this, this follower did more than just the technical part. She went well and beyond the, the level of just, here's what you're supposed to do. Here's the basic turn. She had something to say. There was just so much energy and rhythm coming out of her, even when things didn't go right 100% of the time with her partner. I think he didn't collect at the time where she was expecting, and she didn't stop. She continued to move in a reasonable way that wasn't disruptive to the whole process. So she clearly has a technical IQ that's there, but I was not even concerned with that because everybody can pretty much do it. They're in a competition. So what am I judging on? At my heart of hearts, she represents what I like to judge on is who are you? Let me see something specific that is you in a competition. She has so much that there were so many highlighted points where I could just feel my skin starting to boil over a little bit and I started getting the chicken skin. I love that feeling. She would shoot her hands up like this a couple times and even when the, the leader would do some kind of send out and she had the space there, she didn't take advantage of it some all the time. She was very selective on when she would do something different um, to just you know show the audience musically what was happening. And because she didn't do it all the time, I was just sold. I was sold. I, just, I felt something watching her dancing. So whoever she is, please let me know. She's amazing. She was the best dancer on my list here. So uh, back to what I was saying in terms of the subjectivity of the subject. S swing dancing. Clearly, this is something that is not very objective. We have minimal movements. We have lead and follow. So if you can do a swing out, you're technically proficient. Now, how you look doing the swing out, that's a different thing. That's a subjective thing. I could say your swing out doesn't look good because it doesn't look or honor all of the people who've come before in terms of what is identified as a swing out. It's just some new looking weird shape, but they're still accomplishing at, at the bare minimum follower coming in and the follower going back out. So it's a swing out, right? But the problem is, is there has to be that delicate balance of craftsmanship where we can tell that you are mastering the movements that have already been set up. The precedent has been set already. And if dancers can actually highlight those movements with clarity, we can see that the leader's doing their role without getting in the way of the follower's role and vice versa. That elevates the dance. That tells me not just that you're technically proficient, but you have a the proper perspective of your role in the scene, your role as a dancer. You're telling me that you love Lindy Hop when you can do the moves Frankie Manning originated, the moves that Maddie Purnell originated, the moves that Shorty George uh, originated. If you can do that stuff, great. But here's the problem. The problem is, is once you enter a competition and everybody can do the technique, most people don't know any of those people I talked about. Everybody's doing the exact same moves over and over. So 
what are you actually being judged on if we can already do it? Well, there's a couple things I look at. I'm looking at timing. I want to see how well the dancer can elevate the music. So the thing is, guys, in competitions, we can look at the dancers and just strictly judge them. But they're not in a vacuum. They are actually dancing to live music in this particular case. And the audience is not in a vacuum. They're actually participants in this experience. They are listening to the music. They are giving the dancers feedback with cheers or boos if they don't like something or if they do like something. But the reality is, is the dancer's responsibility to me, this is that other subjective thing I look at, is how well can they match the timing of the music and elevate the music so that the audience can see the music and feel something and get an emotional reaction. And in many cases, not every dancer can do that. Some people will call it musicality and different things. I just say timing because everybody's timing might be different. But if a soloist, like a, the saxophone player, is doing something very specific and I see the dancers imitate that in the same time uh, together and it's a way where it doesn't look just messy and clouded. and No, if it's clear and I can hear it and feel it, I'm probably going to cheer or react. And the audience does the same thing. So I got to tell you right now, my, my third place couple is the couple I felt... Um, this is interesting. This is interesting. You might not agree with this opinion. And that's what I, I like. This is my opinion. If I was at the event, I'd be saying the same thing, except we couldn't have this kind of dialogue because that's not just part of the culture, right? So my third place goes to the guy. He had gray on. I think they were the first couple to come out. He had like a grayish shirt, uh, like a t uh, bluish pants. She had kind of like a tan outfit on. Here's why I had them third. They were technically proficient. They understood the moves that came from the past. They were able to execute those moves well. I didn't see any disconnected problems, you know, with between the leader and the follower. They looked like they were having a good time. But here's the problem. It was like going to a movie that was just good. Not amazing, not great. Not warranting a sequel or a prequel 20 years later. Just good. Just ordinary. Just regular. And so for me, when I see dancing like this, I say it's great. It's technical. I would probably want to learn from them if I first started. But if I'm judging them as a professional, I look at it and I go, that's, that's just a good movie. And that for me... That warrants being at least at third place because it represents the, the pinnacle of having the bare minimum. You've got to be able to do the 25% of Lindy Hop that is objective. That is simply the call and response and being respectful to the shapes that have come before. And so this couple was great. I liked them. There wasn't a whole lot of things that stood out to me uh, artistically in terms of the shapes. But there was nothing I could be really critical on. So my criticism is that it is just good. <laughs> How weird is that? Now, my second place couple, <coughs> which is interesting, because I thought they did not uh, execute some of the vintage movements better than my third place couple. But then again, what if they were doing that un intentionally? What if it was just their way of moving going through it? Some people will say, well, they didn't work on their swing out. The shapes look wrong. Well, what's wrong? Maybe that's what they're intending to do. Now, I can tell you, I didn't like a lot of the stylistic choices that this next couple did. But I will tell you, I liked the musical timing on what they, what they did to elevate the music at the right times. It resonated with me more in such a way that I remember more of what they did. I think that's the fascinating thing about it. And this goes to the couple. Uh, she had like a black and blue. She had black shirt and blue pants. She was lovely, by the way. I loved what she was doing. And he also had like a black uh, shirt 
No, he had a white shirt, black jersey, and blue pants. Both of these couples were like Twinkies almost. <laughs> but what I liked about their dancing is it was very, very musical. It was filled with timing. There were a lot of syncopations where I could, I could hear the intricacies of the music. I could hear the music about the transition. I could see the shapes leading up to certain things to let me know the music's going to change. So for me, they elevated the music. They elevated the music. So they're my second place. I really enjoyed I really enjoyed them. I wonder what's going to happen with him. He's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen him before. It's going to be curious. I'm going to be curious to see what he continues to do in Lindy Hop, particularly if he has something to say um, artistically. I, and I can tell on a rhythm side, on a, on a rhythm perspective, he was very aware of the rhythm on when to like do certain breaks so that the music could be elevated. And not everybody has that. Not everybody has that. Some people have it where, you know, you do the same moves that everybody sees all the time. It's like the little snap, we go in a little circle, we do that, or we just do the same thing. We hear it, but not a lot of people take risk in those places where the music is transitioning. Now, my favorite couple, oh boy. My first place couple, I gotta tell you, was not my favorite couple. My favorite couple, in terms of uh, artistry, was the second place couple that I just mentioned. They were my favorite when it came to uh, just the rhythms and sounds like that. My favorite dancer out of the whole competition was a follower in gold. She's, an, she's amazing. I wish she was with another dancer that I, was, that I think I was like, if I could just switch her with her, with this guy, then it probably would have been you know my first place. Okay, so my first place uh, goes to the gentleman and the follower. They, I think they came out second. Yes, they did. She had like uh, like brown and like tan stripes. Um, he had like a, looked like a soccer uh, jacket on. Blue, uh, black pants, shaved head. <clears throat> For me, they had what I call the full package. But it wasn't the full package that I like. But I still have to be continue. I have to be consistent with my methodology on how I judge people with my subjective opinion. I still have to be fair, even though I didn't prefer um, a lot of what they did. I just got to say, clearly they knew how to do the technique. Clearly they knew how to hear when the music was changing. But what I liked is the thing that they elevated higher. Their strength and I think it was led by him primarily, was the technical ability to highlight the clarity of their movement. So they didn't do as much fancy stuff as the second couple for me, but they were so clear with their movement. They took their time. There was a, a mature patience. Might I say even premature patience. Like you sh You're not supposed to have that kind of patience at this level in terms of being able to dance as well. And so for me, that elevated them at a higher level simply because the thing that's barely that's necessary to get third place was elevated at a higher level prematurely for this level that I would say is really more like an advanced level but this is open so they danced to me like the intermediate advance or the advanced level um, and I put them in first simply because of that that was the main thing that stood out to me was the quality of the movement and that quality is defined for me as this just this inherent patience to not move too quickly, um, to make it look, unfortunately, like the leader is disrupting the followers' movements and it just kind of looks busy and messy and, and not clear. So perfect balance for me is what they had, but they functioned in their strength. So that's why they get first place. So what do you guys think about this particular competition? This was pretty fun. I am... I am overwhelmed by the level constantly getting higher this is an open level and it does not seem like an open level at all now now if we're in korea where that's a whole another story that's a different planet when it comes to the level of what we would consider open even for this level so let me know what you guys thought about this in the comment section if you guys aren't swing dancing yet and you're looking at this and you're thinking i want to do it i should have done it uh, i might i might compete next year and i just chickened out at the last minute i understand 
I remember that first year when I first started dancing, there was a lot of political drama in my own community and the community at, at hand. And getting into the scene was just difficult for me. I was a professional dancer and I wasn't really interested in all the other stuff. You know, I, I went through the journey of getting good at something already. So I wasn't interested in being liked and uh, having a group to hang around with. I just loved the dance and I wanted to learn it. And unfortunately, I had to spend a lot of money just traveling just because there wasn't like a Lindy Hop University. So I had to just travel to all these events and try to figure out how the mechanics of this dance worked um, so that I could help some of the students that I knew would want to learn from me. And that was when I was a student. I knew I would want to teach this thing. That's why I got involved with it. But I was just insecure about knowing how does it work on a fundamental level. So if that's you and you're wanting to just get better on the technical aspects of the dance, I encourage you to check out my fundamentals membership. It will help you simplify this dance enough so that you'll understand what's subjective and what's objective so that you can replace all of that subjectivity with your personal style and confidence. And that's really exciting because I danced over 10,000 hours and, and the, the more I danced, the more fun it was for me to do it because my understanding had been unlocked and I could never go back to the awareness that I had before. I realized it changed my dancing. So I hope that encourages you. If you guys want to get some inspiration and you're like, look, I need, I need new moves, man. I'm doing the same thing over and over and over. It's driving me nuts. My partner's complaining. She can pretty much just finish all of my sentences when we're dancing. Um, I need inspiration. I encourage you to check out my 30 courses below. I got a ton of courses. Uh, we post every Monday and Tuesday on our website. So I want to give you a taste of what it's like being a part of our online community. It's a lot of fun. And my whole position is creating and adding value to this Lindy Hop foundation that's been set up through a lot of the original generation of dancers. And so I'm excited about that and would love to give you a taste of what I'm working on in my home studio. So let me know what you guys thought about this particular competition. Who was your favorite dancer? I told you my favorite dancer. She was great. Gold and the gray. I'm tired of calling her gold or gold gray girl. Uh, I'm sure she has a name, but she was lovely. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Let, 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 your, blah, blah, blah. let me know what your comments are in the comment section. If I don't see you in one of my classes online, hopefully I get a chance to hear your comments in the next reaction video. Take care.